Hi guys, welcome to today's class. Today we are going to see characteristics and problems of a developing economy under general economics. Now we will see first what is meant by developing country or uh, when will you call some country as a developing nation or developing economy. When there is a low HDI that is human development index. All right. What is meant by human development index guys? Please understand it is based on uh, the criteria of say life expectancy or uh, per capita income or their ability to earn and then the literacy level based on these uh, parameters they will uh, you know measure whether there is any development in that particular country or not regarding the people regarding the public who are there all right who are living in that particular country all right so based on that parameters they will measure the nation if that hdi is less then we will call that nation as a developing country or you know underdeveloped country based on their rankings and based on their you know ratios all right again i tell you this is one of the parameter to call a country as a developing country guys understand when we talk about a developing nation there are so many param different different parameters are coming into picture all right not only hdi it is a combination of parameters in one of that is hdi and you know very less industrialization and you know high levels of uh, corruption and uh, per capita lower per capita income lower gdp comparatively to always there is a comparison between other countries so when these parameters are compared when it is lesser when compared to other countries then those countries are called as developing country all right now again i tell you these are all the various parameters combined parameters only it is not like one parameter we will take based on that we will tell yes this is a developed nation this is an underdeveloped nation this is a developing nation no based on the combinations of parameters if you go and check in some other uh, definitions it may go based on the income also they will say whether it's developed nation this is a least developed nation all right so based on income also based on per capita income also it may change all right so developing country means basically which has a low human development index and low industrialization and you know high levels of population high levels of pollution high levels of corruption all right so all these are the characteristics i can say where you can find mostly in the developing country under developing countries also we have four categories majorly new industrialized countries frontier markets emerging markets least development countries new industrialized countries means now the industrialization has taken place all right now the gdp is growing production is going all right all those things are there the what is meant by frontier or emerging markets guys these are all basically for investments classic example is india and china are emerging markets all right frontier market is recently it has i mean it is better than least developed countries it is better than least developed countries but still it is it is small but it is comparatively better than least developed countries where you can make investments all right that is called frontier markets so emerging markets they are showing some good prospects for the investors so they can come and invest in these countries to make sure that their investments are safe and they can have their you know whatever they have invested they can take it back also because those countries are promising so how we are asking for other countries to invest in india so india is one of a emerging market for the other countries all right so least developed countries means this is the less lesser or you know when comparative to other developing nation these are standing at the lowest point where there is no much uh, you know prospects are seen or where they are yet to do well all right so those countries are called as least developed countries all right next based on income if you see developing and developed on developing again we have low income middle income and high income in middle income also we have lower middle income and upper middle income guys it is similar to our even if we see here upper class middle class rich poor like that we will talk no in local language the same way you can compare a country based on many parameters and you can call and a combination of all these parameters will decide whether a country is a developing nation or a developed nation or underdeveloped nation all right when we talk about income again there are three categories low middle and high Uh, that low will be underdeveloped nation we can talk about middle income and high income under middle income itself we have lower middle income and upper middle income and high income all right so based on income also we have what developing and developed nation now income means what we are talking about here here we are talking about the national income gdp that is per capita income we are talking about now what are the features of developing economy 
Guys, when will you call a nation a developing nation? Where you can see all these or not everything, maybe few of this or maybe more than this, all right? And uh, maybe all of this. So you may see experience or you may see all these characteristics or features in any economy, then you can call such economy as what? Developing economy. So first one is widespread poverty, all right? Guys, understand, since we are growing since we are emerging since we are you know developing it means that always there will be an inequality always there will be a difference between the rich and the poor and when you talk about that whether the gap between these two will be there to a greater extent or lesser extent it always be a greater extent and there will be it is that rich people will be more or poor people will be more obviously the poor will be more in the developing nation so widespread poverty all right, poverty has a different meaning, guys. It has a, you know, it is not that uh, uh, income wise we won't call it as if a person couldn't have a meal. So even that is also considered as a what? Poverty. All right. So there is, a, you can see, experience a widespread of poverty in a developing economy. An unequal income distribution. Yes, this is what I was talking. When there is a widespread poverty, obviously it leads to what? Unequal income distribution. There is always a difference between two classes that is haves and have nots. Rich and if I want to put it in a simple language, rich and the poor. Always there will be there. So that is called unequal income distribution or unequal income distribution that will be there in the developing economy one of the major or you know because of that poverty because of that you know now you may have a doubt what in developed nation we don't have or what we do have in developed countries also we do have uh, you know unequal income distribution but the impact of that in the economy is more in the developing nations all right next one is high level of unemployment yes Guys, main thing here is, even if you see India also, even if you see any country, their main aim is to give what? Employment, is to create employment, all right? So wherever there is a high level of unemployment, why it is a, why we call that as a feature or why it is so important, guys? Employment is a very basic for the people to survive. Yeah, it, it is a circle, guys. When there is an employment, say for example, I'll just put it in a simple shape thing. When you have a job, you will have an income. When you have an income, definitely you will demand, correct? When you demand, right? So when you are demanding, the demand for the product goes up. So because of that supply, what will happen for the production houses? It will become a motivation. So they'll produce more because there is a demand. People will buy. So when the production is improving, obviously, again, new employment opportunities will be generated because production has to improve means investments will increase. So once investment is increasing, definitely employment will increase. Again, it is a circle. And it is not only related to your demand and supply. When your employment is there, your purchasing power is improving. Correct. So your standard of living is improving. You can access, you will have access to what? You have access to education, you will have access to proper food, everything. You will not expect everything from the government. When everybody has an employment, when everybody is earning, then the government expenditure on the public will get reduced. So it will have a spiral impact. Correct. So that is the reason all the governments are looking at achieving full employment because once we give the employment, people will have the jobs, people will have the employment. They With their employment, they can sustain on their own. Then I no need to worry about how, how my people will survive or I no need to give any subsidies. I don't need to give any, you know, because they have money, they have a purchasing power, they have the capability to do everything. Correct. So that social, uh, you know, social expenses, public expenses will be reduced tremendously when there is a 100% employment in a country. All right. So high level of unemployment is a major problem or a major feature in which economy, developing economy, guys, because every nation is trying to solve this issue only. Correct. Next, low participation in foreign trade. Guys, this is this low participation in foreign trade is because of what? Because we are low industry, industrialization, we are technologically backward. And because of that, what happens? The, our participation in the foreign trade. Foreign trade means is nothing but export, going global. That's it. So when even if you take our country as an example, India as an example, if you take, earlier and all our products cannot compete with the global products. Correct? We are very much a deficit or we are trade deficit. We always are in trade deficit. Our exports are very less compared to our imports. 
correct so always we participate very less in what for in trade we always depend on because the quality is not that great we are not able to compete with the products from the developed nation because they are technologically very strong we are technologically backward all right and uh, why because that requires investment we don't have that we are still growing correct so that is another characteristics of what developing economy and high rates of population growth yes I'll, okay again india or china we can take it india to population growth is another major problem or a major feature of a developing economy so pop population growth all right uh, i don't think so we need any explanation on that so high rates of population growth is also a feature of developing economy next low per capita income and technologically backwardness low per capita first we will understand what is per capita income per capita income is nothing but the average national income so when we find out the national income that is divided by total number of population then that is called per capita income all right per individual in that country average income per individual in that country all right so that is called per capita income what is low per capita income compared to the other countries compared to the so called developed nation the per capita income for these countries will be usually less so then if per capita income is comparatively less then you can call such nation as a developing economy and technological backwardness yes that is also there and we are the classic examples for that right guys when we don't know what is a computer or when we started using computers at that time developed nations have started using computers even in their you know they were very much advanced correct and uh, when we, we got mobile phones in the year 2005 or 6 or you know 3 but at that time they started using cellular phones a way way before in western countries a way before they started using mobile phones and the cellular phones but we came to know only in the in the 2000s correct in 2000 2001 or 2002 only we came to know right so technology plays a major role between the developed and the developing economy all right usually in the because technology involves much cost technology involves much cost innovation involves much cost and why it was not developed earlier means we have so many issues to first look over then to come towards what technology now we are slowly what improving we are improving on technology side we are improving on our population we are controlling our population also and uh, you know we are participating in the foreign now slowly 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 we are whatever the problems we are identifying and we are targeting those problems we are try trying to solve those problems all right so these are all the features of developing economy now when it comes to indian economy what could be the features of indian economy lowest per capita income guys even now we are having only low per capita income if you see as per latest uh, trend also we have only 2104 dollars that's it 2104 dollars when comparatively it is very less we are standing in 142nd rank all right we are standing in 142nd rank according to the index so our per capita income is very less because uh, you can see the rank also and you can see the amount also so this is as per the 2020 20 statistics so still india is facing this low per capita income per capita income is nothing but the national income divided by total number of population the meaning is the average income earned by earned by per citizen then that is called per capita income so compa india is having comparatively lowest per, per capita income we are standing at 142nd rank and low standard of living this high poverty yes and when i talk about this standard of living high poverty and you know literacy level or all those things i can call it as human development and india ranks 131th rank guys when we talk about this human development india was ranking 131 all right so now also we are having a think out of uh, 200 countries 180 i think it is 200 or 220 countries we are uh, one standing at 131 all right the rank is what 131 so when we talk about hdi I, I, again it talks about what uh, your standard of living your literacy level your per capita income your um, life expectancy everything so when we are standing at 131 then you can imagine where we are correct right? so obviously the standard of living is very low and poverty is high in india all right and equal uh, distribution is also not there income yeah we can see that can you say everybody is on the same level or everybody is on same path no there is high level of inequality in india 
correct there is always a rich and poor now how we saw that middle class upper middle class in that itself upper middle class lower middle class we have who are we have correct and then lower upper class we have in upper class we have three different segments right so obviously there is a inequal income distribution and dominance of agriculture still now in india agriculture was taking uh, at least though when we talk about at the time of uh, independence or after some 30 40 years we used to study that 50% or more than 70% of population is engaged in agriculture even now agriculture dominance of agriculture is there in india even now we call ourselves as an agricultural economy all right fully we are not uh, industrialized so still agriculture is playing a dominant role in indian economy which is again a problem there because agriculture will not yield to the productivity correct so that is a correct resources correct predictions if it happens yes it can yield but now uh, india situation agriculture is not yielding to that level when compared to the other sectors right so still dominance of agriculture is there in indian economy and we do have rich resources only thing is we have to utilize it properly correct next inadequate capital formation yes capital formation here is you know how well the banks has able to take their savings from the public and try to give it to the good productions or good investors or good uh, people who can produce who can invest in the good projects and who can return it back so but still there is a inadequate inadequacy we can see over there even capital market stock market or capital markets you can see that's why indian government is asking for what make in india make in india why make in india why we are asking others to come here come inside and why we are asking other countries to come and invest here because we don't have that capital in our country so we are asking others to come and invest in india all right so still we are lacking in what capital and unemployment and underemployment that is a major issue again every government every you know whenever elections are coming whenever you know you can see every government will be telling we will be providing you jobs we will be creating so much jobs we will create we will be creating so much increment in the employment uh, opportunity so many things why they are worried still we are having what uh, unemployment even now if you see unemployment rate is 6.7% you know monthly averages if you see it is standing at 6.7% all right unemployment rate is 6.7% still it is there and obviously we are technologically backward now we are coming now we are developing ourselves all right next infrastructural yes we are lacking in infrastructure now government has understood it started from there were no roads at all now we have in you know, national highways four ways we have eight ways we have all right now they are constructing you know good ports uh, good uh, connectivity between flights uh, so many things they are bringing up because we are we are backward we are not adequate as compared to the developed nation when you want investments from the foreign countries then definitely you, we have to improve what our infrastructure there is definitely an infrastructural inadequacy in what indian economy definitely it is there and now we are improving on it next one dualistic economy what does it mean guys this one i can call it as regional uh, imbalances i can call i usually call it as regional imbalances because if you see in india one side or one sector it will be fully developed very modernized or you know very urbanized very industrialized sector where if you go to another side you can see that very rural where uh, no technology nothing you know still still agriculture is you know the basic uh, income generation source for them and uh, people will be you know very um, there will be very low income level uh, there will be very uh, what i can say you can see uh, poverty over there all right one side you will see a very much developed and one side you will see opposite of that we are in the midst of and we are having these two things in our country correct so that is called dualistic economy regional imbalances we, we do see that it is there one side it is totally urbanized and one side it is totally rural one side it is not at all developed one side it is when we see that yes it is a kind of development we are saying and another side if you go and see it is totally underdeveloped underdeveloped we can say correct rather than developing we can use the word what underdeveloped right so that is called dualistic economy india is having that most of the developing nation if you go and see that is a major main problem one side it will be one particular place will be keep on growing one particular place you will see you have all the facilities you will have all the infrastructure you will have all the technology you know better standard of living everything will be there if you go to other side it is total opposite of that 
in the same country in the same economy all right so that is called dualistic economy all right so these are all the characteristics of indian economy now problems based on that what problems it may face here is obviously there is a inflation all right inflation rate is there that why every time rbi and you know they have the council and they are keeping you know rates uh, and they wanted to control it 3% 4% 4.2% 6% 6.2% 6 so inflation price rise right so we have to because that decides the value for money when there is a high inflation the value for money will not be there the money ka value will reduce so it is always a problem in india so that is the reason every time rbi is coming with new 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 rates a new 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 you know interest rates a new crr new slr every two months once three months once they are revising it because to keep that inflation in control why because i have to maintain the rupee value correct value of money will go down price increases it will create a burden on the people again next poor educational standard yes we do have that problem in our country and poor infrastructure again i told you now only we are improving it when compared to other countries our infrastructure is very very low when compared to other developed nations our infrastructure is not that great now we are improving it connectivity infrastructure connectivity roads any nation infrastructure is the backbone for any development guys if the roads are well connected if the ports are well connected your business your production will develop your investments will increase right so still we are having what poor infrastructure it doesn't mean only roads guys understand coal chain facility say for example infrastructure it doesn't only mean that roads or rivers or you know dams or you know only not that one even everything which helps in your business or not a business which helps in your gdp correct increasing your gdp helping your gdp to grow for example i'll tell you cold chain facility you know how much vegetables are wasted because we don't have facility to store them yeah because vegetables are having very less shelf life correct so how much vegetable how much you know items like these are wasted because we don't have a facility to store them we don't have cold chain facility to store them so much are thrown every day so much are wasted so much productions are wasted because we don't have a facility to store them properly then that is also called as infra poor infrastructure no correct so yes that is why government has wanted to build you know cold chain facilities in the you know inland container depot so many things they are trying to develop all these things next balance of payment deterioration yes balance of payments means our external payments we are talking about here so exports minus imports now we are when we are importing more than export our payment we have to make the payment and we are finding it big time to make the payment to the outsiders so there is a deterioration in the balance of payment right and moreover our exports are decreasing right so that is again a problem in the indian economy and when it comes to debt debt means the external borrowings you may uh, come across many journals like us is the largest country japan is the largest country for uh, debt uh, you know they are borrowing so much guys understand those are all developed nation their capacity to repay that is much much larger than when compared to india now i'll tell you for debt it is uh, india is 75 to 80% of gdp is forms your debt all right that will be 75 to 80% of our gdp but when you go to us and all it will be more than 100% of your gdp their gdp or japan also does more than that now you may say when those developed nation itself is borrowing so much why can how come it is a problem for an in india understand their repayment capacity is different our repayment capacity is different right why because why we are worrying here though by looking at the numbers though comparative figures if you see when you compare the figures between developed nations and india's ka debt level or debt amount external debt amount you may feel yeah yeah we borrowed only less but understand developed nation ka ability to repay is much larger than the ability of india to repay so that is that is a point we have to worry upon all right if they have more than their gdp if they have debt that is not a problem because they can repay it but here in our case it is not so that is the point to worry all right so we have high level of debt when compared to our repayment capacity 
okay next large budget deficit even now recent budget also we have a deficit where government expenditure is more than their revenue that is one of the problem you know now also it is 7.96 lakh crores we have what budget deficit all right so which is you know again a 3.5 percent uh, you know it ranges every year they have told it is 7.96 lakh crores then when it comes to real times it may go to 9 it may go to 10 lakh crores also so large budget deficit expenditure is more and more whereas the revenue is less compared to uh, compared to the expenditures so again that is a problem faced by what indian economy and rigid labor loss yes why we are for telling here this problem is Guys, understand when there is a labor law again. When investors, they will see everything. You are getting it. Investors, when you ask for other country to come and invest, they wanted first thing they wanted safety of their investment. Second thing, how well easily they can manage business here. Whether the, do they have many laws? Do we need to follow many laws? Whether we have to uh, listen to everything, or the government is too stringent, or the government is okay, relaxed. Uh, Everything the investors will see. Based on that only we will get what? Foreign investments. That is the reason government is going for so many relaxation policies. Right? So now these are all the problems of what? Indian economy. And Indian economy still now we are under developing nation. But recently there is a, a statistic based on a, a parameter which says that India can move out to from developing to developed nation. But being a developing country, we have certain benefits also. So now they are arguing India has moved from developing to developed. Still, that is an argument. Whether it is moved from developing or developed, we may come to know in next, you know, maybe in the future uh, months or in a year's time, we will come to know whether India has moved out of developing to developed nation or not. Now, there is an argument because we have uh, uh, improved. We have improved our GDP. We have improved our per capita. We have improved our production levels. We have improved our technology. So now based on sir, the parameters, they said that India can move from, based on one, two, three parameters, India can move from developing to developed nation. But still as of now, we are still under developing category. All right. I hope you understood this guys. I wish you all the best. Stay tuned to Hollywoods for more updates. Thank you guys.